How's it going? As you probably know, I do a lot of live streams, but I totally understand that not everybody has two hours to sit down and watch a whole live stream. But in those live streams, we do cover quite a few useful topics, and they're a bit of fun. This video is a condensed version of some of the most important parts of one of those live streams. I hope it's useful to you, but even more, I hope you'll join us on a live stream. Here we go. Fully Kiosk Browser. So, here we go. Basically, if you don't know what Fully Kiosk Browser is, it's a browser that goes full screen <laughs> in kiosk mode, um, but that's only like the, that's like the, the, the fine, you know, okay, that's great part. What really makes Fully Kiosk Browser really, really cool is that it opens up your device to be used uh, remotely by all kinds of things. It lets you do things like use the camera on the device for motion detection. You can remotely turn on the screen. You can change the brightness. You can change the volume. You can send text to speech. You can send uh, text messages. Um, you can take camera images. Uh, it's pretty dang cool. So it makes for a pretty good uh, kiosk for something like Home Assistant. Let's open up fully kiosk here. Dun -dun 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 -dun. All right. So the first thing you want to do is set up your go to start URL settings. Oh, start URL. It's right there. Okay. So the start URL, this is going to be the uh, URL that you want it to go to all the time when it, you know, it's start URL sort of baseline thing. So this is going to be home assistant and specifically you want it to go to whatever Lovelace page you want to use, right? Great. Now you are going to need to set up some of these things, this user stuff. Okay. We do need a username. So the username for this uh, is going to be, we're just going to call it pixel 3a. Okay. And then I'm going to put one password for everything so that I don't have to remember it. Okay. We can go through some of these things. Autoplay audio, start playing embedded audio files. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then here's the, here's the trick. So you can enable these plus features like enable file upload. You can enable this, but when you have a plus feature enabled, it will show the uh, little watermark on the screen. I, but I think otherwise it works fine. Uh, enable camera capture uploads. Yes. Enable video capture uploads. Yes. JavaScript alerts. I don't know, whatever. Sure. Enable pop-ups. Sure. Enable webcam access. Yes. That's an important one. Microphone access. Another thing that this can do is it will do um, audible motion detection. So if it hears a sound, it'll open up the screen or something like that. So awesome, right? Enable geolocation access. I don't think I need that. Open URL schemes in other apps. I don't think I need that. Mm, play videos in fully. Oh yeah. RTSP using a built-in player. That sounds good. URL whitelist, blacklist, redirect blocked to start URL. Whatever, sure. Custom URL errors. Okay, so that's the end of the options on this screen. That is not the end of the options. Web browser settings, uh, pull to refresh, sure, enable black, okay. Start URL on home button, sure. Enable tap sound, I don't want it to tap. Swipe navigation, left and right to go, history back and forward, sure. Page transitions, slide frames in and out with navigation, oh, that might be cool. Uh, so read NFC tags. Open URLs from NDEF formatted NFC tags when fully is in foreground. Device management. This one, I think we do need a couple things here. Oh, it looks like that's already on. That's already on. Unlike swipe screen lock, try to unlock swipe screen lock automatically. Sure. Force immersive full screen. No. Launch on boot. Yes. Bluetooth mode. Wi-Fi. I'm looking for the remote... Uh, control one but it'll be in here somewhere just going through the settings going through the settings power settings you can do this i've already got mine 
Uh, keep sleeping if not powered. Sleep on power connect. Sleep on power disconnect. I just want it to stay on all the time, but I already have that in a different app. This one might do that. Force screen off if not powered. Show battery warning. Prevent from sleep while screen off. Uh, I want it to keep the screen on all the time. Set Wi-Fi wake lock. Set CPU wake lock. Kiosk mode. Oops. Oh, here's the motion detection one. This is good stuff. Uh, enable visual motion detection. Yes, for sure. So you can set the sensitivity, frame rate, darkness level, etc. Camera ID. Use the specific camera ID. Keep empty for default front camera. So if you have more than one camera, I guess. So this will be the default camera. That'll be fine. Enable acoustic motion. There we go. So acoustic motion detection as well. Heck yeah. That is awesome. Turn screen off in the darkness. If it's dark, so it'll it'll give you the light sensor, uh, access to the light sensor, and it'll turn it off. But you can also get information from the light sensor sent out to home assistant and such. Okay, so device movement detection. So if somebody takes it off your wall and tries to steal it, you can fire off an alarm. You can take pictures of them and stuff. That's pretty awesome. Okay, and then this is what we've been looking for this whole time. Enable remote administration. This is how we're going to connect it to home assistant. All right. Okay. Remote admin password. You have to set this password. This is important. All right. So that is the remote admin password. That's important. We're going to need that password later. So don't use some random crazy thing you can't remember. All right. Enable file management on remote. Yes, yeah, sir. We're going to do that so we can do that. Grab files if we want to, whatever. Enable screenshot. Yes. Enable cam shot. Yes. Uh, remove remote admin from fully cloud. I wasn't using the cloud. I suppose you, they have some sort of a cloud service. Yeah. Subscription required for advanced features. No, nah, no thanks. Okay. And that's it. There was something else down here. Root settings, advanced settings for rooted devices only. Device owner settings, advanced device policy settings and app install for provision. Nope. Other settings, usage stats, app recovery, export, import. Let's just see if there's anything here. I do want usage stats. I don't know if I want daily, gather locally daily stats available for you via remote admin. Oh yes, this one. Look, MQTT integration. We'll enable. Okay. We're going to put in the broker. This is my, my MQTT broker URL. Okay, and then we'll let it give its own uh, its own MQTT client name to this device. Beautiful. All right, a couple things here. Bing. Restart fully after a crash. Yes. Restart fully after an update. Yes. Run as a priority app. Already on. Consider device in use while keyboard is visible. Now. All right. Consider device in use. We didn't do that. Touching other apps. Restart. Just the idle timer. Meh. Go to the background, enable version, blah, 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 blah. I think we're all good here. I don't think there's anything else. Okay. There we go. Boom. Permission required. Fully requires additional permissions in order to make it to do its job properly. Press OK and grant permissions in the subsequent dialogues. OK. Yay. So here's what happens if you don't get a license. You get this watermark that says, please get a license. Fully Kiox browser, stay logged in. Yes. So there we go. This is the fully kiosk browser. Now, now the magic part is controlling it remotely. This, what you see here, this fully remote admin. So what it's doing now, this hosts a, a basically a control panel website. There we go. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -ba 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 -bum, ba -ba. <laughs> Okay, so now this is the password. This is the remote access password. Okay. There we go. Dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 dun, da, dun. Okay. Now, right here, there are some really simple things you can do right here. It's so nice. Let's see. We can go to, is it, the, is it on the device info page? Let's read through this here. Load. Oh, screenshot. So it can, you can take a current screenshot and it'll display it here. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Uh, you can also do speak text and you can type in. You guys are the best. <laughs> you can show a message. You can display a message on a screen. Mm 
and it will pop up. Oh, it's not showing it on here, but it's showing it on my screen over here. It's just in red letters down at the bottom. What I noticed is in order for that, that will stay there. That little message will stay there until you send a blank message and then it will go away. So that's interesting. Lock for maintenance. Don't need to worry about that. Camera shot. <laughs> you see that? It takes a picture. It takes a picture. All of these things I'm doing, they're just, uh, you can see up here. Basically, it's this with a command equals and then something. And then in the documentation, here's all the things you can do. Now what we're gonna do is, oh, we're gonna look at some of the things that you can put into Home Assistant. How are you gonna do Home Assistant? So here's what you gotta do. There's a few things you gotta set up in Home Assistant to get this working. You gotta set up a REST sensor. So in your configuration, you set up a new sensor, Platform is REST, name, whatever you want. I actually set it up and kept it foo just so I didn't have to do it uh, again. And then JSON attributes, I was going to think, I thought, oh, this isn't going to work, but it does work. Um, now, here's the, here's the trick. Here's the interesting part. And I like how he did this. I like how he did this. He made it so he could, you could copy this. What he put here for this resource is a secret. Okay. The resource, though, what he put in the secrets file is this. And this is basically the rest command, right? So HTTP and then your device IP. For me, for the phone, it was, what do we say, 126. For my actual browser over here, it's 102. For the actual tablet that I'm using, it's 102. So the one, our main one downstairs. Um, so you put in HTTP, the device IP address, the port, and then the command you want. In this case, he put, let's see, info, device info and type equals JSON and pa and then password is fully, pa you're fully password. He then broke out another sensor and used a template, a template platform to grab specific information as a separate sensor. And that makes it nice. And you can do that with any of those attributes. So any of these attributes that you see here, screen brightness, motion detection, state, um, whatever else I guess you want. Um, anyways, he put that in there. So that's that. And that's awesome. Now this, here we go. So fully kiosk browser. We did the sensors, right? This was how you do sensors. If you want to do switches and you do want to do switches, <laughs> you can do them like this. It's a switch. The switch platform is command line. And the foo screen is the name that he's giving to the switch. Okay. Then he's got a command on to turn the switch on, a command off to turn the switch off, a command state. Uh, and then he's got the value template uh, if the value is equal to on. And then down here in his secrets.yaml, he's got the, uh, the basically the REST API commands, right? Because this is a command line. So he goes to user bin curl and then he does a dash x post and then he posts the uh rest command and this we get again from here so when you go down here you can do app management let's see where is it uh unlock right lock and unlock are here stats screen camera shot right so i i want to make one i haven't done it yet but i want to make one with this camera shot, right? Requires motion detection. Get camera shot versus get screenshot. Oh, get screenshot will give you a, a shot of what's being displayed on the, on the screen. This is the one you want. Get camera shot. So this one with this get camera shot command, you can click that button or set an automation or whatever, and it will take that picture. So he's got them. Let's see, there's a whole bunch of commands in here, but the ones he's got will turn the screen on and off. Okay, he used the ones that will turn the screen on and off. Uh, and again, there, it's formatted the same way as the sensor. Um, but here's the format again, the IP address of the device, the port, and then here's the command. Command equals screen on. And then he does this, uh, type JSON password and password equals fully. Okay. And you put those in, he put them in a secrets file again, and then just referenced them here to a secrets file. 
you could, if nobody's ever going to look at your, if nobody's ever going to look at your, um, look at your uh, config, you could just put them, you could just put them right there. Maybe the screen state, fluid password, screen status, screen status. I don't know what he's, oh, that's to tell it. That's what this is. This is a switch. I'm sorry. Now I didn't, this is a switch he made that shows the state of the screen. So the screen is on or off. Now I did put these in my, um, in my home assistant here. So it does show them. Um, here's the foo screen switch. Uh, so you can see the screen is on. And if I click, if I click this, the screen will go off. Boom. <laughs> If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.